Saturday at Paul Ricard launched the McLaren Trophy Europe and this is race two here on Sunday afternoon and the conditions have changed. It's been a very heavy downpour of rain about an hour ago. The track looks dry to the eye but it's certainly going to be playing on the mind of the teams. Will they start on treaded tyres or with slicks? And the a person who can tell me this perhaps is the person alongside. Looking uh, it's 20 degrees air temperature so that's cooler than it was just by a long margin. 28 degrees Track temperature, humidity though, still high at 76%. And Tommy Erdos, you know all about these McLarens and the McLaren Trophy Europe. What do you think will be going through the minds of the teams? They'll have been looking at the sky. If they've got two cars, will they split their strategy? Wet tyres and slick tyres? Very possible, yes. Uh, good afternoon, Pete, um, Bruce and everybody here. Uh, welcome to Paul Ricard again. A great race yesterday, I think, inaugural race for the, for, for the series. Um, uh, we had some, some great battles uh, with the bronze. Uh, and obviously the pros, but uh, yes, I think uh, the teams are thinking that themselves. Well, no, is it slicks or is it wet? Now, looking at, looking at the uh, format of these cars, it's not going to be a quick change mid-race because uh, they're, they're five stud uh, wheel changes. So that is certainly a factor. You've got to be quite bold and quite sure where you're going. Also, unlike yesterday, the pro drivers start today. They're the ones who want to go out on a track that is potentially still a little bit slippery. So that presumably indicates that most of these cars will be started on uh, slick tyres. Yeah, Bruce, that's a really interesting fact about the, uh, the five sort of uh, wheels, uh, but that's only in the Artura. Now, the 570 trophy has a single nut. So will the 570s come to play if it comes to tyre changes? That, that could be really interesting how it changes the field. OK, Tommy, if people are looking at these for the first time, they're hardly behind the curve. They're on track for their first race yesterday. We've got the new Arturas at the front of the field and then the 570s. Different in format, but the Artura, it's the GT4 Artura, plus a little bit, well, quite a lot in terms of making it faster. What's it got? Yeah, so the Artura is basically, uh, uh, the, the new Artura GT4, it's basically the same car, but de-restricted. So instead of having BOP and restrictions on the engine, there are no restrictions. So this is where this car really takes off. It's, we're talking nearly 600 horsepower, 585 to be exact. And, um, but the car is very light at 1300 kilos. Plus we have a fairly aggressive uh, upgrade on the, on the arrow, makes the cars really stable. Mechanically, it's a really, really uh, good platform already. So it's a very predictable car, especially for the bronze drivers to get used to them. And of course, they're very ably backed by their pros who are teaching them the best way around uh, the cars and, and this track. And um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's going to be an exciting second race, I'm sure. Now, having talked to the drivers, whatever testing times they'd had and then practice and qualifying, yesterday for a lot of them was their first race with these cars. How did they find them? Because they certainly looked actually very manoeuvrable, which would really, really help. Yeah, very much so. Their first experience uh, in, in anger, if you will, uh, they had a, a limited amount of uh, uh, driving time. Obviously, the, that was really biased towards the bronze drivers more. So the pros, quite rightly, sat back a little bit, let them get used to the cars. Um, so, so this is all very, very steep learning curves for all of them. But as you saw yesterday, the race was really, really good, really strong. The cars are basically very predictable to drive. And, uh, and uh, so, so you could see that the bronzes really got to grips, to grips with it very, very quickly. So uh, credit to, to McLaren for putting these amazing cars together um, and again they're not slow you know they're, they're really really fast machines now obviously the circuit Paul Ricard has got lots of runoff area so that provides a whole lot of confidence if you run wide you're just going to slow yourself down rather than hit anything but the racing was notably good for, particularly for a first performance for a lot of these drivers so um, really they did a fantastic job I'm sure they didn't want to be the one that became the first one to fall off in this brand new championship Absolutely. I think uh, apart from obviously uh, Gonzalo at the, the start of the race, as we had a problem with the start, that was pretty much it. A, a, maybe a couple of light contacts, but they all really got to grips with it very quickly. I was really you know, pleasantly surprised. Uh, I thought perhaps being in the first round, there'll be a few little whoopsies here and there. But no, it, it just again goes to show that the cars are very well balanced, uh, generally speaking. So, uh, so uh, yeah, I think they're enjoying it now. And um, they had a lot of uh, wet driving up to that, uh, you know, sort of testing. So well, let's okay. go. Le thanks very much, Tommy. Let's go down and hear from one of the drivers. He's down with Gemma. He was one of the stars yesterday, Mohammed Al Khalifa. Mohammed, the car's just arriving here. Perfect timing. Look yeah. at that. What a great championship this is. You know, a great start to the season it's been so far. Interchangeable weather coming for this next race. How are you enjoying yourself this weekend? Uh, absolutely. It's been, a, as you said, a great start. Um, great start for us as a brand new team. So podium yesterday and hopefully another one today. And we're excited. It's, it's uh, you know, being a support uh, to the GT World Challenge is, is tremendous. Uh, so we're, we're all 
proud, happy and excited. And it's a great moment for McLaren as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the new Artura is, is a good car. It's a big step up from the, uh, the old 570 GT4 and uh, it's uh, promising. Absolutely. Will you be starting on slicks? Yes, I think, uh, ev uh, I think yeah, almost everyone is. The track's almost dry, so... We, and, and the GT4 race was, you know, I think <laughs> seven out of the top eight were yeah. still on slicks, so I think that we'll go on slicks. Just goes to show it can be done. Well, have a great race. Thanks, Mohammed. Thank you very much. So that was Mohammed Al Khalifa, and the pros are starting this race, but only be given a small amount of time. They will have to make a pit stop between 10 and 20 minutes into the race. So still the lion's share of the driving will go to the AMs in the lineup. So Charlie Hollings will be the driver who kicks off in the Inari Motorsport uh, number 13, and Mohammed Al Khalifa will have to be getting his helmet on fairly soon because it's going to be not long after the start that they do come in. So just to reiterate, Tommy Erdos, it's the... AM drivers who set the qualifying time in bo for both races, but in this race, it's the pro drivers who get to kick off. That's it. So reverse order in, in the sense that the uh, pro drivers will start this race. Uh, obviously, the uh, bronze drivers started yesterday's race. I think it's a great format. I think, uh, again, it, it uh, really biases the, uh, the, the amount of time that you spend in the car to the bronze drivers, <coughs> excuse me. I think that's unique in Europe now in terms of uh, a championship that's really you know, made for, for the bronze uh, guys. And, uh, and uh, that, that's how it should be, really. I mean, uh, we'll see how the first uh, 10, 20 minutes go with the pros, but that's also exciting to see the pros now together you know, for, the, uh, for the first time. I'd say the first time, but they were obviously at the end of yesterday's race, but they will actually get to start the race. Let's see if they can all get off the line cleanly. Well, one of those pros we need to talk to spent yesterday in the commentary box with us, but he's back to start the number 12 it's joe osborne joe you've had quite a bit of work to do to get the car prepared for this race today yeah a fair bit of damage uh, on the car so the boys were here till uh, in the early mornings la last night getting it all back together for uh, jay and myself so uh, got to repay them basically jay had a, an all right quality so obviously fourth for me uh, the weather's going to be the big one us Brits love talking about it, I know, but uh, it's going to be like an ice rink. No tyre ovens for us. So we've all been working our little bottoms off trying to get some heat in it. But, uh, yeah, the first few laps are going to be absolute carnage and hopefully I'm not the one that causes it. <laughs> no, we hope so too. Thanks a lot, Joe. Have a great race. Joe Osborne there, often the centre of, act of attention and uh, a, a real character, but he's going to be... Uh, working it out and uh, well done to the crew for getting that sorted out as Optimum Motorsport. It was a long day for all concerned, particularly with the six hours going through till midnight, but then for them, the midnight oil had to carry on being burnt, but job well done. So all the cars that started race one will be starting race number two. Now, yesterday's winning car was started uh, by Mark Hopton yesterday, and he is down with Gemma while his co-driver, Ewan Hankey, sits aboard. Well, with our race winner from yesterday, Mark, it was a great day yesterday. Thank you. Are you kind of relieved that you and starting today with the weather as it is, the track still drying? Uh, yes, we don't really know what's happening at the moment. It's, <laughs> it's warm, it's sunny, it's raining, it's, yeah, everything all at once. So, uh, yeah, I'll be relieved to let you and go and investigate the track for me. Absolutely. I mean, there is the opportunity to change onto wet tyres if yep. need be. And that rain, as you say, is starting to get a bit heavier. It is. It is getting heavier, yes. Uh, um, hey, we've just got to play it by ear, see what happens. Uh, anything could go on in the next 20 minutes. The team will make the right decision, I'm sure. Uh, they always do. So, But we're confident. We've done all my racing in the UK, so I'm more than used to driving in the wet. So. And this is the first time here at Paul Ricard this weekend? First time here at Paul Ricard, yes, yes. I've done two test days, but first time racing here. Fantastic. Well, I wish you a very good race. Have a fantastic one. Thank you. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Should we just take a quick walk down towards the front of the grid? I believe Benji Goethe was here earlier along, who's uh, racing in the GT3 Championship, of course. And uh, he is a pro driver. He's looking on. He's uh, in the papaya orange of McLaren and uh, representing the team here as well. Benji! <laughs> Can we grab a quick word with you? Yeah, sure. You're here with the GT3s this weekend, but here now supporting the, the new McLaren Championship. Yeah, it's, uh, it's super exciting, this new championship. I mean, uh, obviously I was here racing yesterday in the GT3, and uh, yeah, I came here to, to watch, uh, watch the start of the, the new championship, the McLaren Trophy race. Obviously it's, it's new, so it's just getting started, and uh, yeah, very exciting stuff. Well, these guys have got the pros starting right now, and yeah. it's looking to be a little bit tricky perhaps with the conditions how difficult is the track right now it feels quite slippy underfoot yeah it's uh it's quite difficult because i think they're all starting on slicks but uh 
yeah, obviously the track's a bit greasy because it's just drizzling and yeah, it's going to be difficult to see whether they start on wet or slicks and yeah, I think it, some teams are going to maybe take a gamble and, and uh, stay on slicks. Well, quite nice for you to be a spectator for a change. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's different, it's different, but uh, no, it's nice. I mean, it's a really cool new championship and uh, yeah, I, I, I like driving, but I also like watching, you know, it's, it's fun to do both. Well, enjoy. Thanks for talking to us, Benji. Cheers. So Benji Goethe down there, and what you don't really pick out is that very light rain they're talking about down on the grid. Looking from the commentary box, we see people in the grandstand seats wearing just uh, short sleeve shirts. Maybe they didn't pack very well for the day, but uh, just something. And sometimes, Tommy, just you get imaginary rain, nearly imaginary rain. But I notice actually uh, one of the cars there, car number 12, the windscreen wipers were just going across the screen. <laughs> Was that a good thing to do? Actually, that was car number 23, I beg your pardon. That's Ollie Webb's car. And uh, so it's that... Once you've put the windscreen wipers once across the screen, you're sort of committed to using them, aren't you? Because you smeared what's sitting there. Yes, I think uh, right now, obviously, this, uh, the screen should be clean enough. And uh, Webb probably did that to actually understand how much rain is falling down. So that once you, if you give it a wipe, then you obviously you clear it. And then you can kind of judge how much rain is actually coming down on track. And that will give him a gauge as to you know, how far he can push maybe the car onto the first few laps. But, you know... Talk about drama. I mean, these guys, they're driving, you know, the, the, the cars belong to, to the bronze drivers. They've got a lot of pressure on to keep the, these cars on the track on a very slippery surface. And it's balanced against the fact the owners of these cars, the AM drivers, would like to have a race, but they'd also like their car to be nearer the front if possible. So a lot of pressure. And let's just run down the names of the drivers who are in the top two rows. We've got uh, Thomas Pintos will be starting on pole position. And uh, then alongside him, Charlie Hollings, Ewan Hankey, Joe Osborne. Let's go down another row as well. Michael O'Brien, Charles Vossman. A lot of drivers who've got a lot of mileage under their belts in McLaren. So they know these cars, but it's still a new car. But it has plenty of power. Just reiterate again, 585 horsepower, 1,320 kilos. We've got the other class of car, which is the 570S McLaren, which has 570 horsepower to match the name, which is less power, but also an extra 110 kilos. So like quite a large person sitting in the passenger seat. Absolutely, those are the difference. The main difference in terms of power to weight ratio. Actually, the 570 as I've been told yesterday, uh, it was 540. Oh, 540. So it's actually it's 540. So, we, um, so, but still very powerful. Both both classes. Now, it's very interesting. At the front of the grid, you have Thomas starting the car in pole position. He has quite a few drivers around him. They are very experienced, really quick guys. Now. For Thomas, if you put the uh, the driver pairings together, mathematically, they are still very strong for this race. So Thomas really needs to, of course, push hard, but not so much that he makes mistakes and loses it. Because when it comes to the driver change, the driver pairing there is very strong. So don't get caught out by the Osbournes and the Webbs and, and the Hankies in around you. They're going to push him very hard. He needs to keep his cool and his calm you know, in, the, in the early laps. And what, of course, he's going to be handing over to, or who he's going to be handing over to, is Gonzalo de Andres, who's been the star of qualifying. He's taken pole for both of these races. So it's a very well-balanced lineup. But how many racing drivers don't want to hang on at the front? Thomas Pintos is going to have to have the angel on one shoulder, the devil on the other, and see how it goes. Very much so. It's a real careful balance that he is to strike. And uh, let's hope he does that. Let's hope uh, that he... You know, they have a good start. That's the main thing. Yesterday, obviously, was pretty disastrous. Uh, but, you know, they're getting used to these cars. They are a bit tricky to get off the line. They need to learn them. But uh, they learned good lessons from yesterday. OK, so having started on pole position yesterday, Gonzalo de Andres, we saw one car didn't get away and then was, then was amazed that all 15 cars went past and 15 cars went past because it was the pole starting car. Gonzalo then really raced very well uh, to, to overtake much of the field to get the number seven car back towards the front. What are we looking forward to? 50 minutes of racing, two drivers in each of the cars, and the moment the pros will start this race, they will be given the mouse's share of the race. Anything between 10 and 20 minutes of this 50-minute race, they will be allowed. If they come in after that, the car will be disqualified, and that means the lion's share, of course, will go to the AMs. And in the 570 class, there are three cars that only have AM drivers on board. That's a factor to consider as well. So we've got the two classes of racing plus the AMs in the 570 class. We'll keep an eye out for them and their progress. Yes, um, uh, just to mention on the uh, one of the M classes, number 15, that's uh, Danny uh, Henry. He's it's a solo driver, so that's the only car there with one driver. He drove very well yesterday in the 76 entry. Didn't come away with quite the results he looked as though he'd been heading for. But right now, the car's going out around the circuit to check these vital conditions. They would have been aware that little bit of drizzle when they were sitting on the grid. And as I think it was Joe Osborne explained, one of the pro drivers, he's starting the car that will be in fourth. 
all the reference points. The rain that came down through in the GT4 European race was so heavy and it absolutely unbelievable. So any rubber that's been laid down before completely expunged from the circuit. So almost virgin territory. Almost all the cars I noticed have uh, started using the windscreen wipers around. So let's take a look at the grid. It's the Spanish driver Thomas Pintos for SC, SMC Motorsport on pole position from Charlie Hollings who will be handing over to Mohamed Al Khalifa. Row number two of eight, Ewan Hankey's yesterday winner. Uh, and he will be handing over to Mark Hopton. Maybe in the lead, maybe not. Joe Osborne, that was a car that hit trouble yesterday. And he'll be hoping that he can get that to the very sharp end of the field. He'll be followed by race lads Michael O'Brien and Charles Walsman for Equipe Fechor from the Netherlands. Down towards the midway point in the grid, Ollie Webb will be looking to atone for being delayed by a slow puncture yesterday. And he'll be starting alongside Adam Wilcox in the second of the Inari Motorsport cars. These are all Artura Trophy cars, but the best of the 570S trophies is the car started by Bradley Ellis in car number 11 from 9th. And alongside Bobby Trundley, Team Brit, car number 68, also in the 570 class. And then we have uh, Danny Henry, who uh, we pointed out will be doing the race solo in car number 15. Jem Hepworth, she gets to start the Greystone GT number 24 today. Two more rows of cars to come, and this is the second race of the McLaren Trophy. And it's Rob Young for DMS Automotive, another British driver. And Stuart White didn't get to have a go yesterday because that car didn't get going. And today it will. That's car number 74 with the South African driver on board for the start of the race. Then John Lancaster for Greystone GT, penultimate position, and Ross Kaiser. Look for those two drivers within that 570S class. Tried, tested, proved, and very positive indeed. Look at the cars going around, sliding around over the over the painted curbing. And there's a lot of painted curbing here, but we know, Tommy Erdos, painted curbing after a little smattering of rain is not a good place to be. No, you want to keep your wheels definitely off them and keep it on the black stuff. Look at the cars just weaving side to side. There's actually a, a little bit of grip on the track. I was, I'm surprised how, uh, you know, how much they were able to actually try and generate some heat. So uh, I think uh, this, you know, by the time the, this lap is finished, I think they'll have a good feel for, uh, for what the grip level is. Now, nice to mention also um, Ross Kaiser, who is you know, driving the car, he didn't get a go yesterday. And Joe Osborne, of course, he didn't get to uh, to drive the number 12 car, unfortunately. Uh, Palmer having that, that, that incident uh, towards the end of his stint. Uh, Palmer did a fantastic job uh, up until that point, obviously, and it was, I think, P2 at, at that point when it happened. Yeah, he was running in, in P2, challenging for the lead, just one little slip off uh, towards the end of the lap and just got beached, and uh, that was that, but the car's been repaired and uh, brought back. So we've got the full grid of 16 cars split across the two categories. The Arturo's at the front, lighter, more powerful, and the brand new racer and the 570S tucked in behind. And that class has a subdivision as well with three drivers running simply as AMs rather than pro-AM pairings. And one of those, Danny Henry, will be doing it all on his own. Bobby Trundley, often seen in British GT. He's uh, starting towards the sharper end of the grid for Team Brit. So a lot of faces very well known for driving McLarens here, there, and now everywhere. But it's about coming through the final sequence of corners. And this was a standing start yesterday, much, very unusual in uh, GT type racing. But for the driver who's going to be starting on pole position, car number seven, that's Thomas Pintos. He'll be hoping that he makes a rather better job than his teammate Gonzalo de Andres did yesterday when he failed to get away, was overtaken by the entire field before having to fight back. If he hadn't done that, one thinks he would have taken outright victory, the pair. Yeah, it's very likely that that would have been the case. I mean, uh, as, as we said before, uh, in pure mats, the, the driver pairing there is very, very strong. Now, let's see, uh, yeah, with the, the pros now lining up to, to get the start. I mean, these cars don't have clutch, you know, they, they, they have two pedals. So it's a, it's a tricky uh, combination between brake pedal and accelerator to get just about the right amount of revs, but then don't hold it too long because it, it can actually default back to neutral. And that's what happened to Gonzalo yesterday. So these guys are aware of that, but, you know, it's only their second race. <laughs> it's thinking, it's doing. We were very, very impressed with the quality of the racing yesterday. A lot of new driver combinations racing these cars for the very first time. 570s towards the back half of the grid and the brand new Arturas at the very front end. But this time it's the pros in the Pro-Am lineups that will be starting. Thomas Pintos on pole alongside him, or just diagonally behind him, Charlie Hollings in the number 13 in Ari Motorsport. Entry looking fabulous in its dark blue and gold livery. All the cars now should be forming up in grid position. Ross Kaiser bringing up the rear. That's 16th position. That's on the pit wall side. Safety car is tucked in behind. We're going to have to look at the lights on the gantry. They'll go from red to green. The big question is when. 
and who's going to react the fastest to that. 50 minutes of racing lies ahead. The green flag is waved. That means the signal can be given from the front of the grid. The lights will come on. They have come on. And a very, very quick change from red to green. And Thomas Pintos absolutely nails it from the start of the grid. Joe Osborne appears to have gone right past... Uh, Ewan Hankey, and in fact, he's not hanging around. Joe Osborne didn't get to race yesterday, and he takes the lead. There was then contact uh, behind him. It looks like Ewan Hankey had, had a little bit of a rub with Thomas Pintos, but Joe Osborne was talking about the track still being greasy on the outlap, and that is brave, brave driving. He's nailed it, got the lead, and held on through turns one and two that will have far less grip than he'd been hoping for. But about two, three, four car lengths to the clear. It's the fighting that's going on behind that's looking very tough indeed. And Thomas Pintos already fallen back to fourth place. Great start from him, but he got out-muscled, out accelerated by Joe Osborne. Still, though, neat and tidy, Tommy. Yes, very much so, and I'm happy to see that he actually kept the car on a tarmac, just, just about on a tarmac, but uh, it's there in third, fourth place. Good, safe position for lap one. Lap one, these are the pros at the front of the field. Joe Osborne still weaving, still trying to get heat into the tyres on this, the opening lap. They will use the chicane halfway up the Mistral straight. Now, the big question is, of course, has we will take a look at uh, there was contact with uh, Thomas Pintos, car number seven, and he got really a bit out of shape and was it, it was under braking perhaps for turn one, but no problem at all for Joe Osborne. He'd already taken the lead uh, in the number 12 for Optimum Motorsport. That was the car that was rebuilt overnight, clearly rebuilt very well indeed. So Joe Osborne stretching his legs up to the crest of the hill there at seniors oh actually maybe he got tapped up the rear oh that's not quite how it left the left the factory but despite that well maybe that was thomas pintos got so close to him he then backed it off and i thought he also got tagged from behind it can often happen but uh, certainly for jay palmer who began well the car wasn't handling brilliantly yesterday after he'd had his moment but joe what have you done to my car but actually it was assaulted from behind but anyhow, let's hope it doesn't uh, affect the car's handling too much. And all Joe Osborne is going to have to try and do is get that start under the belt and uh, try and build a lead. Well, uh, let's take a look at how, it, how Joe Osborne went from fourth on the grid. Well, it's quite simple. He went straight up to second. And then by breaking later into turn one, Oh, actually, it was a contact with Joe Osborne and the nose of car number seven, and that was why we had the Inari car of uh, Charlie Hollings coming back round into second place, being past at the start. One lap on the board, 1.4 seconds to good is the race leader, Joe Osborne. Let's see if that uh, bit of undertray starts to rattle itself loose. Then comes Charlie Hollings, Ewan Hankey, Thomas Pintos, Michael O'Brien, Ollie Webb, Charles Vossman, and Brad Ellis leading the 570 class in eighth position overall. Yeah, Joe Osborne there showing some, some aggression there into turn one, but using all his experience and skill to get into the lead and now pulling away a nice uh, margin. But uh, let's hope that that rear diffuser stays where it is. Um, yeah, that's the question mark now for the uh, Optimum car. Now, for a driver of uh, Joe's standing, he wouldn't be rattled too much by having something loose at the back. But the big question is how Jay Palmer's going to feel when he takes it over. Will he have seen that? Well, he will have seen that. He'll be looking at the screens in the pit lane, but he'll be thinking, is that going to affect the performance? Is that going to affect me? So it's something he needs to be quite clear in, in his mind. He's got to suppress that. You have to think also at what point the, the organisation, the race control, will decide to maybe uh, give a flag. Well, if, you, if we just take a look, as uh, the rear corner of that car, the left corner, it's not a, an advanced McLaren aerodynamic device, but it's a, an unwanted extra, and the diffuser is hanging down as Joe Osborne exits the, uh, I think it's the Montreal chicane version up the back straight there, up to the top of the hill, still setting a very good pace. It looks though like Charlie Hollings is uh, matching him. In fact, it's not matching, we'll call it catching. We're talking about, actually, he lost two tenths in the first sector. Second sector, Charlie Hollings got it back again. And Ewan Hankey is uh, not too far behind, half a second further back in third place overall. But the, for Charlie Hollings, if you're looking up ahead, he'll see the fact this isn't how this McLaren Artura left the factory, the car up in front. So he's going to go, OK, right, my car's handling well. But all these drivers know they've only got anything between 10 and 20 minutes in these cars. They haven't got long to make their impression. And they're trying to do their absolute utmost for the AM drivers who will be taking over from them. That's it. They're pushing as hard as they can, obviously, to give their bronze drivers uh, you know, the best position for them when they leave the pits. Uh, yeah, the question mark, again, for the Optimum car is, you know, are those pieces of body work going to hold on? Uh, is the organization you know, going to decide that perhaps he needs a black and orange flag for uh, you know, something falling off the back of the car? Uh, let's, let's hope that he can finish his stint and bring the car back into the pits. Well, let's hope so. No untoward messages on the screen. A handful of cars have been given warnings for track limits, and in fact, two to number 77. So that's uh, Ewan Hankey running in third place. He's been pinged for running wide at turn seven and number 10. And car, already a black and white flag 
for car 77, the car that I was mentioning in third place, Ewan Hankey, uh, for disrespecting track limits. So he's done it once, twice, he's got the warning, and the next one, if he gets it, could be big, bad trouble. So that message will be absolutely uh, put to, to him over the uh, car, pit to car radio. Very, very clear indeed. Right, stay between the black lines. That is far better than saving a tenth of a second on the track. 100%. He needs to be very careful now not to get that penalty. And uh, yes, the, the team will be in touch with him, telling him that. And uh, but uh, you know, you did a fantastic job yesterday, putting a lot of pressure on Ollie Webb yesterday. But obviously, Ollie with a, with a, with a stricken car. But uh, great uh, win for the opt for the um, uh, Greystone GT car. And. Uh, but now he needs to be careful. Yeah, and that's uh, Hanky turning in third place. He's just put in the fastest first sector of anyone, so he's got the pace, but he cannot afford to just grab those extra few centimetres off the side of the circuit. So let's go down the order. Joe Osborne leading by 1.8 seconds near enough. Charlie Hollings in second. Ewan Hanky in third. Thomas Pintos just coming into view. The metallic uh, pale blue car with the orange stripes for golf livery. And in behind him is 27, Michael O'Brien. Ollie Webb not too far behind him either. Those cars almost nose to tail. The white car with the yellow and black spots, that uh, yellow and black markings, that's Ollie Webb. Charles Fossman just out of the picture, two seconds further back. Now, let's take a look at super slow-mo coming up of Joe Osborne's car. Now, Tommy, look at this. He's working this very, very hard indeed and rotating the car around, but we can see the damage at the back. Yeah, the, uh, the top damage there with the bodywork hanging off, that's not doing very much at all to, to hinder him. But the bit at the bottom, the diffuser that you can see hanging down behind the left rear wheel, that's not a good sign. Having said that, he's still setting the pace. He's the only one in the 08s, 208s. Uh, so it's not really slowing him down, is it? No, I think the big question is, is it any worse than it was just after the impact uh, happened into turn one for the first time on that standing start here? But no, the good thing is you're looking at these fabulous shots of these great looking cars uh, going down into turn one. The light is getting brighter and brighter in the image. That means any potential threat of rain for now appears to be moving away. But if you swing the cameras the other way, you'll probably see the mountains behind shrouded in cloud. But we'll take the improved weather conditions. Very humid for the drivers in the cars. But for these pro drivers, they're used to this and they'll be getting out very soon indeed. Who's going to make the greatest mark? In fact, Ollie Webb appears to be the driver really pushing on very hard. He's in sixth place. He's right on the tail of Mike O'Brien in the number 27 in fifth. And Thomas Pintos... That poor start, having to come off the power a little bit uh, for him in the start. Yes, Ewan Hacking going very well as well. Posted the fastest time now at 208.1 against the Osborns at 208.3. So, uh, so Ewan on the move. So, right, just... To just a little thought. What would you do if you were the team chief at Optimum Motorsport, Tommy? You know that your driver is leading the race. That's Joe Osborne. You know he can come in after 10 minutes, which is coming up in uh, just over two minutes' time. But be between then and 20 minutes, do you risk losing his track time, bring him in to sort the back end of the car? Or do you go, I think that's something we can manage, and we'll leave that for his teammate to see what he can do for the rest of the race. So you risk losing some of your Joe time but you do have the chance to maybe prepare, not repair the back of the car, but uh, prevent the damage getting any worse. I think what will, will help you make that decision is really the pace in which uh, Joe is, is driving. Right now, he's really still setting the pace. Uh, so while he's quick out there, I'll would, I would leave him out there. And obviously, they're in touch on the radio. They can, they can talk to each other, and uh, he can tell them exactly what the condition of the car is and hope that when it comes in the pits, they're able to actually effect some repairs into that car so that his teammate can then carry on. Great little scrap we're looking at here, Tommy. Tom, Thomas Pintos in fourth place, Michael O'Brien in fifth, and the driver is really pressing. Ollie Webb, disappointed yesterday, had that slow puncture that dropped him back. Next car in line will be Charles Volsman, and the car after that in eighth place is the car leading the 570S class. That's Bradley Ellis, number 11, drove really, really well yesterday. He's sharing with David Foster, and they came away as the class winner. So he's doing the job, but Ewan Hankey is pushing. He took the win yesterday. Today he'll have a shorter uh, stint to do, but he's diving up the inside. He set the fastest lap of the race so far, and he really seems to have handling where the car in front does not so much. Charlie Hollings... Side by side, up, the, up, the, up down the hill they come. But that was a very, very good move from you and Hanky, especially as he knows that one little slip up and he go wide off the circuit and then the punishment will come his way. Very clean, clean pass there from, uh, from Ewan. Uh, good friends off the track, Ewan and then Charlie, but uh, they're racing as hard as, as, you, as you do. And, uh, but very clean pass. Uh, 
uh, obviously has more pace than Charlie at this stage. Yeah, so at the moment we've had three cars given black and white warning flags for disrespecting the track limits. We've mentioned Ewan Hankey, who's now just moved up to second place in the number 77. Car 13 also has been noted for that. That's uh, Charlie Hollings in second place. And now car number 74, the driver of that, is uh, running in, in the uh, 570 class. It's Stuart White, the South African, didn't get to have a race yesterday, so he's very keen to make progress. Great effort by Stuart White. These guys just arrived. They didn't race yesterday and uh, have done no time at all in these cars. So a very, very good effort so far. Now, the black and orange warning flag for mechanical problems being shown to car number 12, the race leader, Joe Osborne. And that uh, probably suggests he might as well come in as soon as he possibly can. And that will be now the pit window is open. This 50-minute race, between 10 minutes into the race and 20 minutes in the race, therefore giving uh, the AM drivers anything up to close on 40 minutes or certainly more than 30. Uh, so Joe Osborne should be pitting from the lead of the race. Nearly three seconds clear, 2.85 seconds over Charlie Hollings last time around. A new and Hanky, of course. Hanky and uh, Collins have been... Uh, sh shipping around. So Osborne now actually, oh gosh, he's had an even better sector. 4.093 seconds. So as the two behind fought for position, Charlie Hollings, you and Hankey swapping positions, Joe Osborne's been making hay. While I can report here at uh, Circuit Paul Ricard, the sun is shining. There is the race leading car from Optimum Motorsport. And it's moving around because what's happened, the car, yesterday's winning car, number 77, having been a little further back, has moved ahead of Charlie Hollings, is now trying to close the gap again to the race leader. But Joe Osborne is uh, trying his best to escape and trying his best not to run any curbs because that could certainly loosen yet further that uh, diffuser. Car number 12 is the latest to pick up a penalty. That was Joe Osborne now. Yeah, that's Joe Osborne disrespecting track limits. So four of the runners have got the sword of Damocles over their heads uh, for having been given a black and white warning flag. Now, here's Bradley Ellis driving absolutely beautifully. This is a car he shares with David Foster. They won the 570S trophy class yesterday, and he's putting on another masterful performance, running in eighth place overall. The next car in class is John Lancaster, who's moved up from pretty much at the back of the grid in the 570S class, car number 80, which he's sharing with uh, Ron Trenker, an American racer. So Lancaster making the sort of progress you'd expect from a driver of his caliber and all that can happen at the front of the field for Joe Osborne is listen out to any messages from the team because there is the black and orange warning flag because that car, the officials are noting the fact it's not quite mechanically as sound as it was when it took the start of this race. There is John Lancaster uh, giving chase in the 570S class. Second place in class. It's been a good run from him. So Ron Trenko will be waiting, going, thank you very much. Actually, you're doing a good job. Stay out as long as you possibly can, but he can only stay out for about another seven minutes before the pit window will close. Yeah, Joe will be absolutely uh, devastated now with this uh, black and orange flag and having to come in earlier. Of course, I'm, I'm sure the team was hoping to uh, stretch him out to the 20-minute mark or close to the 20-minute mark, but that's obviously not going to be possible now. No, it certainly isn't. These frustrations are there. Racing drivers have to pay heed, of course, but the good news is we started with uh, 16 cars. We've got 16 cars running and all the drivers are learning as they go. And in comes Joe Osborne from the lead of the race. This is the car that had rear bodywork damage after contact. Turning into the first corner was given a hit up the back by the driver who'd started on pole position, Thomas Pintos. No intent in any of that, but unfortunately, loose rear bodywork and now one of the rear wings starting to peel up. Probably not affecting the car too much, but it was considered if that came loose, it would be a danger to the drivers behind, thus the black and orange warning flag. So the first to blink, but that was because his hand was forced, is Joe Osborne. So Jay Palmer will be taking that over, possibly marginally earlier than he expected, but he was given a lead of nearly four seconds. Just have to bear that in mind when all the drivers have made their driver change or certainly made their pit stop because we've got uh, Danny Henry not bothering with the team teammate. He's running the whole race on his own in the 570S class. Yes, the Optimum crew now obviously work on the car, try to repair that damage if they can. They've got one minute, exactly one minute and 49 seconds in which to do that. There's no penalty for that car, of course, because it didn't feature in the, uh, in the results uh, yesterday. So, uh, and there is no tyre changes. They're staying with the same tyre. So all the time they have there, uh, of course, they have to change the drivers, but hopefully they'll put some, uh, some kind of fixings into those, that rear diffuser especially to make sure that Palmer can then carry on the good work that Joe did. It may not look quite as beautiful as it was at the start of the race, but uh, beautiful is only really what's shown on the stopwatch. Now, success penalty. 
and ballast. Tell us how it's performed, Tommy, if you will, in the Arturo Trophy. Okay, so we have obviously two different classes. Uh, we have a mandatory stop uh, that lasts one minute and 44 seconds for the M's, for the 570S M entries, and then one minute and 49 seconds for the other two. So for, for the 570S Pro-M and the Arturo Trophy, they have a, a, a minimum time. They have to sit in the pits uh, all together at one minute and 49 seconds. But of course, we have success ballast from race one. Okay, now what is the more effective way of fixing a car? Bolting it back together or ripping off the offending piece of bodywork? That seems to be the approach taken by uh, the crew at Optum Motorsport. They wanted to get Joe Osborne out as fast as possible, or more to the point, it will presumably be uh, Jay Palmer who's taken that over. Because, of course, Joe's had his run, and in the next five minutes, we will have all the pros who started the race getting out and handing over to their teammates. And just remember, this car was... Tw about four seconds ahead of the rivals. The rivals were fighting, and Ewan Hankey has assumed the lead of the race. He'd moved up to second place, and uh, Charlie Hollings is up to second now because Ewan Hankey's been promoted to the lead of the race after Joe Osborne's early pit stop. But the big question is, when they come in, and by the time they get out, which one of these cars is going to be up close to well, Jay Palmer? Well, if I or one. will the gap... Yeah, if I have to put my Good money in, my money is still on the SMC car, which is the uh, the Gonzalo and Thomas car. I mean, that's again, I think will be a, a big challenger when when it comes out of the pits uh, in terms of pace. Uh, but uh, Optum uh, Optum Motorsport did a great job there. Uh, to answer your, your previous question, uh, they did the right thing, which is to rip off the bit that was hanging out. If you try to fix that, you just you know it takes too long, and you probably won't do a good job at it. So they did absolutely the right thing to do, which is to rip off the bit that was hanging. And if the, if he loses a little bit of rear down. It's going to be marginal, frankly. Right, with some of the others making a pit stop early, the battle for third place is still Thomas Pintos at the front of it. Michael O'Brien is having to work so hard. Ollie Webb really trying to hustle his way past. That's car number 23. And they're not too far off the tail of Charlie Holling. So, in fact, ironically, normally when you get two or three cars fighting with each other, they delay themselves a little bit. But they've all shown very good pace. But also Thomas Pintos has shown he can defend as well as attack. In fact, he's hardly been looking forward. He's been looking in his mirrors. And uh, cars starting to rotate their way through the pit stops. Yes, remember the pit stops. They are they have success penalty as well, which uh, uh, we have to look at. Car 77. So that's you and Hanky and Hopton. They will they will have to stay in the pits one minute and 56 seconds. Uh, so they get seven seconds added as success ballast. And 13, the Khalifa and Hollings car gets five seconds added to the pit stop. So that's one minute 54. And then the number seven uh, car uh, will get three seconds. So that's the. Um, Thomas and Gonzalo car. Uh, so with only three seconds added to the time, again, that goes towards the, uh, you know, the SMC car being very, very uh, competitive at the front end at the moment. It does. So you always want to win races, but it does come with a little penalty, makes it harder next time around. But that's absolutely fine. And the drivers will work out uh, the best tactics, how to get there. Do you actually want to take the points for second place and have a smaller? No, of course you want to win the race. But it's also the class victories uh, that uh, can allocate this. And now with that, that little battle has been separated because Michael O'Brien has come in to make a pit stop, meaning Ollie Webb can now move on to the tail of Thomas Pintos. And maybe he will find a way past the Spanish driver in that number seven car looking so immaculate in its metallic blue and orange livery. Now the majority of the cars in the pit lane. There's Michael O'Brien uh, just getting out of the number 27, entered by Race Lab. And that means American racer Thomas Surgent should be next on board. And he had some really good scraps yesterday. Very, very clean. And uh, for a lot of these drivers, it's not just about driving these cars. It's about racing. And they did a really 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 good job at the first time of asking oh now suddenly the pit is becoming very full indeed and that's because they probably couldn't risk doing another lap otherwise they'd have been beyond the end of the pit window which will close you won't be able to come in the pit lane after we get through the next uh, 15 seconds so it's very tight indeed sorry i couldn't see the screen with the flight we've got one minute 40 seconds actually remaining before the pit window will close and Ewan Hankey continuing on the way. This is the winning car from yesterday, car number 77 from Greystone GT. Ewan wanting to stay out as long as he could. He got that very early warning about uh, one more excess over the track limits and a penalty will come your way, but he's keeping it the right side of that equation. And in this championship, in the McLaren Trophy, is that a penalty just for that driver? Or is it for the whole team? You know, to be honest, Bruce, I was actually just thinking that. I'm not sure if it is the driver or the car. 
So that's something we need to find out. Yeah. Yeah, it might be something that I think is probably less fair if the AM driver gets in. He's got to take the penalties to the pro. But if the pro has to get in and take the penalties to the AM, that doesn't quite. They, they can find easier ways of getting around that. However, now looking at the pace that Jay Palmer is setting, 13th on our screens becomes 11th as he starts another lap. But with everybody else having him come in behind him, bar three at the moment, that should put him back at the sharp end, possibly in the lead of the race. But for Jay, he knew the car had a little bit of problem. It had that uh, re small rear rear end damage. He knew also that he was getting it earlier than his rivals. That means the pro drivers had more time in the other cars. So he shouldn't expect to be in the lead of the race uh, by the time the quickest of the others. And really, in that breath, I'm mentioning car number 77, yesterday's race winning car, leading the race at the moment by what will be looking 5.3 seconds. And that is still to come in. No, Ewan Hankey is now in the pits. Got it in the pit window. Is closing in 10 seconds time. There is the 77 car at a standstill. In behind comes the number 23 car. Ian Campbell will take that over from Ollie Webb. Two cars entered by Greystone GT. And the good news for the drivers getting in, there is uh, any hint of slipperiness on the circuit appears to have disappeared because uh, with the 16 cars from the 570S class and the Arturo Trophy class, they've done a good job of drying out everything apart from the bits way beyond the painted lines on the outside of the circuit. Yeah, great job by both, all, all the pro drivers now. They're, they're, they're probably feeling a little bit relieved now. They've come in the pits and, and able to handle to, to hand over the car to, to their owners, I suppose. And uh, so, yeah, let's uh, let's see what uh, transpires now. Obviously, the, the field is a little bit mixed up now with the pit stop, so we're going to have a better idea in a lap or so as to who is doing what. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, the stagger will unwind. Just looking at the tail end of the car that was a hit going into the first corner. It was, had Joe Osborne at the wheel at the time, the car that uh, gave it a little tap under a lot of its own pressure was the number seven car, Thomas Pintos. He'll be handing over to one of the stars of yesterday's race, the driver who's taken pole for both of these races, both with the AM drivers going for, for pole, and it was Gonzalo de Andres. We'll see if he has better luck today, but Tommy has analyzed the statistics and works out as a driver pairing, they're very well balanced, which is exactly what you want. Right, Ollie Webb has handed over the 23 to Ian Campbell. Here comes Ian, and the good news for him is his car has jumped ahead of the sister car, which is 77, but that was yesterday's race-winning car, so that had an extra seven seconds added to its pit stop time. So that said, Greystone GT did a very, very tidy job uh, for, for the number 77, but Mark Hopton knew he was going to be ping, ping back, peg back by having a longer pit stop. That has happened. It's out of the way now. Now, let's see how the order settles down. Yeah, and both, uh, both uh, Campbell and Hopton did a great job yesterday. It'll be really interesting to see who comes out on top on this one here, this particular battle in front of us now. Good news is the little threat of rain, a little light drizzle when the cars were down on the grid. The drivers could feel it as they were putting their helmets on. It's gone now. Look, the sunshine here. And we commented just coming into the commentary box just how warm it is today. It really, the temperature's picked up. The humidity is very high. But your, your point, Tommy, was the fact, well, the track's going to dry out fast now. Absolutely, the track dried up. Even even on the the formation lap, you can see the pro drivers, you know, weaving the car. It suggested there was a, a fair amount of grip, even though it was still damp at that point. But it dried up very quickly. And I'm sure the the bronze drivers are really happy that the pros took the start of the race, uh, which you know, in what was a, a fairly difficult track for them. But uh, now they have a, a dry track, a track that they they are familiar with from yesterday's race. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Well, the, this is the battle between two Greystone GT cars. Ian Campbell. Uh, in 23, being pushed very, very hard indeed by Mark Hopton in yesterday's winning car. And bear in mind, Hopton's car, number 77, has soaked up a seven-second success penalty in the pits. The big question is, at what point is... Where is Jay Palmer going to be in the mix? Looks as though car number seven is in third place overall. That's Gonzalo de Andres. There he is, the blue and orange charger from SMC Motorsport. Who's going to be next in line? Will Jay Palmer be up there? But it's harder for him because he lost a lot of his pro driver's track time by the car being brought in early. But uh, at the moment, Ollie Webb have pushed on so hard in that opening stint. This is a car that picked up a frustrating slow puncture yesterday, but he's got yesterday's race winning car in behind. And Mark Hopton, his first appearance uh, racing here at Paul Ricard, is going to show us what he can do. He's got plenty of time to do it. 26 and a half minutes remain, just over half of this 50 minute race. First three, Tommy, very close indeed, covered by uh, one and a half, 1.3 seconds from Campbell Hopton to Andres. Uh, Mohamed Al Khalifa coming through, Thomas in fourth, Thomas Surgeon in fifth, and Jay, Jay Palmer 
well, that early pit stop's really hurt because the number 12 car down in sixth place. If it hadn't had the damage, if Joe Osborne could have carried on for a few more laps, I think we'd be looking at that car still in the lead of the race. Yes, that definitely cost him time. There's no doubt about it. But look at Hopton now putting a lot of pressure on uh, Campbell and, uh, and the, the Andrews car right behind them. This is a great battle. Now, this is that classic situation for the driver in second place. That's Mark Hopton. He wants to attack Campbell in front of him, but suddenly he's got to look at his rear because Gonzalo D'Andres in the number seven Artura is the quickest driver out there on the track at the moment, and he's uh, trying to use the slipstream. They don't go the whole way up the Mistral straight. It's still a long run out of turn seven, but then they suddenly halfway up to have to hit the anchors as late as they possibly can and turn left, right, left again, back onto the straight. And the first two corners of this chicane, very tight indeed, and both of them caught the race leader Ian Campbell there. Yes, I thought, was that back? There's someone in front. Oh, no, that is Campbell in the lead. That's it. Yeah, it's Campbell in the lead. And let's just talk a little bit about uh, seven places further back in eighth overall, but leading the 570 classes. Uh, David Foster, car number 11, took class victory yesterday with Brad Ellis, and Brad gave him the class lead before the pit stops. Second in class is Ron Trenka, about 11 seconds further back. So uh, really looking at yesterday's pace, David Foster should be able to take this to the end, but uh, is going to have a good long stint in which to do it. And the good news is the mountains in the backdrop of the image there as we looked across from uh, Double Droit du Bursay is the, the, we can see the mountains behind us and often from a commentary position you can't see what could be your enemy but today that camera shot really showed us this battle for second place is really getting very tough indeed but Mark Hopton being, uh, instead of being able to attack the race leader Ian Campbell he's got to look exactly where Gonzalo D'Andres is and uh, is Andres being caught by Mohamed Al Khalifa I sense Yep, uh, looking at the next car in the line. I think that's Khalifa's car from the Inari Motorsport uh, label. Yes, it is. So the driver from the Middle East uh, flying along. Top four cars covered by 2.4 seconds. That's pretty special, isn't it? This is when you, Tommy, you put a championship together, you can work on the format of the car. You hope that it's good in terms of race ability. And also it's got to be good for the AM drivers. But then, as I say that, we have a spin there from our race leader, Ian Campbell. Ironically, the driver who wasn't under pressure. He had a, a margin of one and a bit seconds. Yes, the, tri the trio behind were closing him on him. But just that moment out of turn two where the track drops away, round came the tail. But you know what? In a lot of cars, they might have carried on spinning. Here we had the stripe lines at the end. Now, did he spin because there was a problem? There was a suggestion he might have a puncture, but the fact he's dropped so far off the pace after recovering, and recovering very well, suggests perhaps not all is right. So this was a car that picked up a puncture yesterday. Car number 23, the left front. And uh, that is very, very frustrating indeed for the crew from Greystone GT. Looking set for a really good result, being helped by the fact the second place battle between Mark Horton and Gonzalo de Andres was so fierce. And that in turn was being caught by the driver we're looking at now of uh, car number 13 from Inari Motorsport, Mohamed Al Khalifa. Well, he said he, was, he thought this championship was exciting. So some excitement right across their noses at turn two there when the race leader Ian Campbell went for a spin. Did he spin because he's got a puncture? Or did he pick up a puncture because he went beyond the circuit onto those abrasive stripes out beyond circuit edge but either way it matters not he's going to be tumbling down the order very frustrating for the 23 crew very hard pill to swallow that one for them especially after yesterday you know with the puncture on, on when Wally was, was driving so we saw at the end of this uh, incident so I think it looked like he may have just got on the throttle a little bit too early coming out of turn two and lost the back end but here we go well, here's a replay. Tommy, talk us through it. Out of shot because he's uh, leading comfortably through turn one, but into turn two, I think we'll pick up uh, Ian Campbell already rotating. Yeah. Now, he rotated quite deep into the corner there. What's your reading of that situation? I mean, it could be that he just got on throttle a bit too early and lost the back end, but no, does, does he have maybe a slow punch on that left front that then made the front end dig and, and gave him obviously you know ill handling if you will uh, so that could have contributed to the spin uh, difficult to say really until we actually uh, you know speak to the team after the race but uh, what a shame you know it was going so well and Ian did such a great job yesterday as well in race one and he, he, he was doing a very good job just now leading the race so uh, uh, very bad break for them well I tell you what even if he'd lost a few tenths it would have been disaster because we'd have had the top four covers cars covered by about two seconds. As it is, we've got to make do with three cars covered by 1.2 seconds. This is that battle for the lead. Mark Copton, yesterday's winner, 
with you and Hanky. Can they do it again? Gonzalo de Andres, who started on pole, or more to the point, stalled on pole, started dead last, worked his way up the order. He's taken over from Thomas Pintos, and he decided victory might be a good choice for him today. He got on the podium yesterday with third place after a brilliant recovery drive. But today, he's hunting down Mark Hopton. Mohamed al Khalif will be watching this just a second or so further down the road. There's another car just up ahead, and that'd be one of the 570S runners. And that could yet affect their run. Yeah, very similar pace between the Andres and Hopton at the moment. You can see only one tenth separates in terms of best lap. But uh... now, now, chance, uh, Tommy, to take a look at car number 11. Why are we looking at that? Because it is leading the 570S class, and that's uh, David Foster. He's now been promoted to seventh overall with Ian Campbell limping his way back to the pits. In fact, he's now entered the pits. So what could have been victory for 23 is not waiting for the next of the cars in class, in the 570S class. Here it comes, Ron Trenka. Car number 80 turning into the first turn, so he's been promoted one. And third in class should be the driver who goes solo in class, should be uh, Danny Henry in car number 10. That's Ron Trenka from the States. Quite a few American drivers very much enjoying coming, not just to drive these cars, but to drive on the European circuits as well. And certainly they've got lots of space to play here at the Circuit Pori car. Oh, now car number 11 class leader in the 570s a time penalty of 17.666 seconds added after elapsed race added to the elapsed race time so that was our class leader and now a change for the lead of the race or is it number seven is still in behind Mohamed Khalifa in third place is closed in so an attempted passing maneuver on Mark Hobson by Gonzalo de Andres didn't work and he now knows that little slip up as they go past the Team Brit entry, that should be Aaron Morgan keeping out of the way as best he can into Turn 1, but still having to go across the nose of Gonzalo de Andres. But that little slip-up from de Andres gives hope for the driver in third place, and there is Mohamed Al Khalifa. Uh, now, as soon as he gains some in third, he's lost a little bit, but they all have to get past Aaron Morgan in the Team Brit 570S. Job done for all of them, but uh, that was a close, close scrape there for Mark Hopton. That was the first real attack from Gonzalo de Andres. Yes, and we still have 19 minutes to go. This is shaping up to be a great battle between those top three cars there. And uh, yes, the Andres went a little bit wide uh, coming out of the last turn, turn 15. But uh, yeah, they're still back together. Shame that we lost again. Campbell's car would have been a four, a four race battle there. But great to see these guys battling hard. OK, how good are you at maths? Let's work on this one, Tommy, because it's a 17.666 second being added, a penalty being added to David Foster at the end of the race. At the moment, he's 11.37 seconds clear. So he's got to find another, well, let's say six seconds to make sure that he will win the class overall. All eyes on the front of the field, though. The McLaren Artur is always going to be ahead of the 570Ss, and it's as close as you can like. You can just see Gonzalo de Andres in the number seven is closing little by little. But uh, for Mark Hopton, this is where he's going to earn his corn, defending from a driver who is potentially faster. And he's going to say, basically, if you want to come past me, you're going to pass me. I'm not going to leave a door open for you but he's still got plenty of time in which to attack 18 and a half minutes. So this is going to be a long 18 and a half minutes, but perhaps a magnificent one for Mark Hopton. Hopton's doing a fantastic job. Look at the lap times. He's now done a 2.077, and the Andrews on a two. I mean, they're still, you know, nose to tail, but uh, great. he's putting all the stops at the one Hopton. He knows he needs to do that to keep the Andrews at bay, but it's going to be a really, really good battle right to the end. And Khalifa, don't discount Khalifa. He's just there watching it. You know, he's in a grandstand seat, uh, watching what's happening in front of him, saving his tires, saving his energies, and, uh, yeah, will be a great finale. Well, it's exactly what the doctor ordered. And uh, the number 12 car, which uh, led the race early on, Jay Palmer's risen one position to fifth overall, but he's uh, 15 seconds back off Thomas Sergeant, who's running now on his own in fourth place. So Jay Palmer set back with that bodywork damage. How much it's affecting the car? Of course, they ripped off one of the loose elements, but uh, perhaps both of them as well. But it also gets into a driver's mind, doesn't it, that a car isn't visually perfect. And how much is the aerodynamic effect uh, troubling him of that loose bodywork? Yeah, it, it can do. I mean, obviously, Joe seemed to be uh, completely uh, uh, unaware of that, and uh, his lap times were still very strong. But of course, as he came in the pits and they ripped a few more bits off, it could have an effect on the car. The aero package that they introduced in these cars are quite aggressive, so if you lose some of it, of course, you're going to lose some performance. Yeah, and if that means downforce going away on a circuit like this, every time they get to the top of the hill at uh, that fabulous fast right-hander at seen, that will be in a driver's mind. They'll be going, can't I race at a circuit with fewer fast corners? But there is brilliant flow on the circuit here at Circuit Pori Car. This is, excuse me, the battle for first place, and it's very, very tight indeed. Yeah, we're looking at a move oh. now inside the uh, chicane. 
Well, it was certainly tighter than ever before as they went into the mid-straight chicane. And that was a phenomenal move from Gonzalo to Andres, just pushing uh, Mark Copton a little too deep into the corner. And he couldn't get the turning in. And that also gave uh, a chance for Mohamed Al Khalifa, who'll be looking to pounce in number 13 and try and go up the inside. Has a look up the inside, but there isn't an inside. Mark Copton closes the door. But I really fancy that now the number seven is in front. Gonzalo to Andres will stretch its legs and start to escape. He's shown fantastic form in this race two of the first ever meeting to go with race one of the first ever meeting for the McLaren Trophy Europe. Yeah, what, what a great move there inside the chicane. Both guys at the very limit of their braking, no contact, very clean pass. And as you say, I think the Andres will now probably uh, start to edge away, but we'll see. And Khalif is getting close uh, to Hopton as well. So uh, again, the, the, the battle for second place is still developing. Yeah, time aplenty. We've got uh, 15 minutes remaining. The race had 50 minutes to start with. We've eaten through nearly 35 of those, but the fact the first three cars are still going to be covered, despite the change of order by little more than one and a half seconds when they go across the line. It's race lead, new race leader, Gonzalo D'Andres. Second place, Mark Hopton, the previous leader. And third place, Mohamed Al Khalifa. The gap between the first three of them is 1.2 seconds. That is very, very competitive indeed. Car number 80, Ron Trenka, look at that, because he is... Effectively, at the moment, second on the road in the 570S class, but with a 17-second time penalty to be added to the car in front of him, which is David Foster. That means he's class leader in 570S, but the big question is, can David Foster lap faster than him on every lap at the moment? The answer is no, not at all. They're almost the same time, so he's not going to find the six seconds he needs. Well, he may still, but at the moment, he's got to, to find a way to go that little bit faster. Uh, it does look like a steep mountain to climb there. Real shame for car 11 because they did such a great job yesterday. They won their class. And, and today, of course, they had a success penalty because they won race one. They were in the pits longer than everybody else, but yet came out on the lead. So, uh, you know, a big uh, uh, you know, congratulations there for, for the job well done. But obviously, they have a penalty and they have to uh, deal with that now. Yes, and I think we have to assess the most likely cause that we've got a, a time penalty, 17.666 seconds. Is That's probably how much they didn't add to their pit stop in terms of you came under your minimum pit stop time and quite often in championships if you go under by 4.29 seconds that is how much is added to your time at the end of the race that's my guess so uh, anyhow it's about for teams and championship with the new championship it's about learning the rules how to use them how to not fall foul of them is actually more the consideration but like right now let's park that because let's look at the first three cars in the race Gonzalo to Andres Mark Copton uh, Mohamed Al Khalifa still running in that order. The number seven only recently went to the front of the race with that brilliant move into the chicane, halfway up the Mistral Strait, but uh, that was last time around. Let's see uh, what happens this time. But uh, no, sorry, the further around the lap, this is coming up towards out of Dubose. Uh, coming out to complete a lap. This will be lap number 16 they put on the board. They're still super, super close. One little slip up from any of the lead trio, from De Andres, from Hopton, Al Khalifa, and this order will change. But they are having a really good classic scrap here at Porika. And, you know, we thought the Andres would pull away once he got in the lead, but that's not happening, is it? They are still very much together. It could be anybody's race. You know, I, I really was thinking about this yesterday. I was just wondering, Gonzalo de Andres took the two poles. All the AM drivers did the pole qualifying. But some of the other drivers must have made, taken a little more time to become used to the cars. Maybe overnight they've been away and thought about it. And maybe that's why this gap has come down. Maybe there were some really good development tips from you and Hanky to Mark Hopton in second place for Greystone GT. And uh, certainly you, want, you feel that... Uh, Charlie Hollings passed across good information to Mohamed Al Khalifa. Mohamed was very impressive in yesterday's race, but all these drivers, they've got another race under their belt, getting to learn these cars. They would have been a little bit fearful about that greasy track surface when they went out, but luckily that was for their pro teammates to cover that. And right now they're doing exactly what they should. Now, having been deposed from the lead, well, Mark Hopton go, OK, I see how to overtake. Into the chicane they're approaching now, halfway up the Mistral straight, they'll go left, right, left. The first two corners, the tighter ones, and then it's a more open uh, left-hander back onto the straight. But no gain from any of the drivers there. In fact, a little bit of difficulty turning through the right-hander there for Mark Hopton. So tyre life maybe, uh, or, or maybe just touch the kerb on the inside. All these small things can make such a difference. But again, it's about having a constant race circuit and just understanding how your behaviour of your car goes away as the track life, uh, tyre life gets eaten away. 
they're certainly very evenly matched. I mean, uh, uh, looking at the lap times, actually, Hopton has a better lap time than the three of the three of them. Uh, but uh, every lap that, they, that, that Hopton spends behind the Andrews, he's working out where he's quicker than the other guy. Now, it's always exciting looking at the timing screens and the moving picture screens, but a little message just told me the race leader has got a five-second se penalty for exceeding track limits. So there he is sitting just half a second clear. Now we're looking in the five... The 570S trophy, we have three drivers in that who are in the AM class, and uh, we're looking at the moment at the driver who's going solo, and he should now be in the lead of that class because still that time penalty. Yes, Danny Henry, well, he's, he's lapping up all the experience. He knows the car in front of him has got a, a penalty to be added at the end of the race, the best part of 18 seconds, and he's only 13 seconds behind. Do the maths on that one. Don't do the maths. I can tell you, he is actually leading the 570S class outright. And this isn't a Pro-Am lineup. This is a, an Am-Am driver. It's a Danny Henry, Danny Henry sort of lineup. So he's having a great run here at Circuit Pori Car. Once again, for Danny, a great, great showing. Uh, look, remember yesterday, he was doing very, very well. Had a penalty in the pits, unfortunately, for uh, you know pit stop infringement. But uh, but he's certainly got the pace in the M class and is now challenging for the lead. Now going down the slope into turn four, which is uh, Virage de l'Hotel, and uh, turn three is Virage de l'Hotel. Then uh, there was the front washing away for number seven. So suddenly it's not looking all so sweet for Gonzalo D'Andres. He was looking to pull clear. He's got to get a five-second advantage. You can see the message on the bottom of the screen, race control pointing out exceeding track limits too much. He's not alone in that, but that five-second penalty, he's not five seconds clear. I can tell you uh, right here, right now, that's about two-thirds of a second he's clear. So the clock is counting down. Ten minutes remain in this 50-minute race, the second race ever in the McLaren Arturo Trophy and uh, in the McLaren Trophy, and it's looking suddenly not so good for him. And likewise, the 76 car is second on the road in the 570 class, but with a time penalty hanging over, not hanging over, being issued to number 11. Then things will go on. So now let's take a look. It's busy, busy, busy. This is, a, this is how we had Danny Henry giving chase, catches and passes Ron Trenka. Coming past the pits, Ron Trenka in the blue nose part. Well, it was just a far, far better exit, Tommy, out of turn 16. Such a different, uh, part, difficult part of the track. Yeah, that looked like an easy overtake there, didn't it? He had a lot more pace than Trenka at that particular point anyway. So, uh, uh, done well there. Very, very, um, yeah, just a very clean move. And, and there wasn't really difficult at that point um, for Danny. Yes, and in fact, looking at them the, the, the next time around, at, at Ron Trenka just doesn't have the confidence through that really, really difficult final corner. Turn 16 on the circuit, Virage uh, Dupont over the bridge, the circuit entry bridge. And uh, Dan Danny Henry, yes, he's eighth. He's behind the car that is leading the 570S class. But the margin is 14 seconds, and the leading car has got a 17.6 second penalty to be added to its time at the end of the race. So can, in the final 10 minutes or so, it's gone down, it's eight and three quarter minutes. Can Danny Henry reduce that gap, or will it go out a little bit? But as long as he's, uh, let's say, 17 and a half seconds and no further behind uh, David Foster, then he will take the outright victory in the 570S trophy. Who's going to be the first driver to the finish to take the chequered flag? It could still be Gonzalo Dandres in the number seven car entered by SMC Motorsport, but his Artura is not far enough clear because it's got five second penalty hanging over it. Mark Hopton's one of yesterday's race winning duo, along with you and Hanky, is just half a second behind. Then Mohamed Al Khalifa, 1.6 seconds further back. Sorry, one second further back. Still very, very close. I'm looking for any further investigation of uh, offences. There's a timing screen that gives you the penalties that are coming. And at the moment, in the blink of an eye, it could change all over again. Because if Mark Hopton is uh, pinged for something and gets a time penalty, then that will give the lead back. And this is uh, Ron Trenka trying to keep out of the way. Very difficult job to do at the chicane and advantage to Mark Hopton in second place. Got a cleaner exit of the chicane. Is he close enough to get a toe up the hill into scene? Certainly, uh, Gonzalo Dandres will be aware of that. Not close enough, but close enough to close in. That's very, very important for Mark Hopton. Close enough to put the real pressure onto Dandre. So this race is far from over. Yeah, it looks like Dandres just doesn't seem to have enough of pace, really, to move away from, uh, from Hopton. And, uh, and, of course, it's kind of a torture, really, because he knows that he's been done for track limits, yet he needs to push very hard to try and build a five-second lead. So in a, in a very, very difficult situation for Dandres, uh, We'll see. We'll see how it develops. A few other drivers uh, under warnings for exceeding track limits. Just have to quickly check it's none of the class leaders or the front runners, but it's uh, number 71 is the most recent one. Car 42 
Oh dear, this is under the offence for under investigation for cross crossing the pit lane blend line, car number 42. It's uh, one shared by Albert Jochems and Charles Volsman, with Albert doing the second part of this race for a keep for sure. We'll keep an eye on that. And that car at the moment is running in sixth place overall, sort of having a fairly lonely race recently. Certainly not lonely at the front because Gonzalo de Andres still hanging on in the number seven, but still has five seconds to be added to his elapsed time at the end of the race. And that means the two cars behind them, him, Mark Hopton in 77 and uh, Mohamed Al Khalifa in number 13, will move from second and third to first and second as long as they don't pick up a penalty. Yeah, right now Hopton's uh, problem really is Khalifa. And, in, and if he stays close enough to de Andres, he's got the win. But obviously, if Khalifa gets through, then he's the winner. Well, still plenty of racing going on down towards the back. Been looking at 53, Nils Langberg, and he's been chased down by 74. And uh, Sean Pendrick really, really pushing on very hard indeed. But I don't think the clock's going to be his friend. Six minutes remains in this race, and he would really like to move up another position. But look how much he's been gaining. Nearly 10 seconds on some of the laps. So actually, he surely will have time. So don't give up But for... Neil Langborg trying to hang on to what would be one, two, three, four. He's fifth place in class, but it will become fourth, one would feel. Yes, it looks almost inevitable, doesn't it? The, the pace difference between Pendrick and, uh, and Langborg. So, uh, I mean, P4, that would make it, sorry, that would put Pendrick to P5 in class, which is a very credible result for them. You know, uh, if you think about it, they weren't here yesterday. They've, they've had no time at all on the car. So great to be able to bring that car in the top six. Well, it's getting better and better as we look at first, second and third. But we know the car at the lead of this group, car number seven, has a five second elapsed time penalty to be added at the end of the race. And then unfortunately for the chasing pack of Mark Hopton and Mohamed Al Khalifa, they're the wrong side of a car that needs to be lapped. The car that is being lapped, car number 71, Matt Le Breton, took over from Rob Young. He's delayed them a little bit, but not, well, not yet by five seconds. And that's, pres if it could be five seconds, uh, Gonzalo D'Andres in the lead of the race with that penalty hanging over him would say, thank you. It's cost them a second or possibly two, the chasing duo, but it's not going to be enough, surely, for Gonzalo D'Andres. In fact, they close right in on him at turn 16. Puff of smoke as the cars go through that really tight right-hander onto the start-finish straight. So the race running towards its conclusion and let's have a look at the race leader in this replay, how he managed the traffic. Well, he's managed it by not driving on the track. Now track limits he's been picked up for before. Now that is very, very interesting. I hadn't managed to catch that last time. Might've been looking at a timing screen. So the two cars we're looking at now, well, we knew, though they were second and third on the track, they were fighting over the effective lead of the race. And if there's any further penalty for number seven, for Gonzalo de Andres, uh, that will put him even further behind them. He's got five seconds to add, which will move him back to third overall. And it could be more than that. So is it going to be a double win for the number 77 of Mark Hopton and the driver who today kicked it off, Ewan Hankey? You'd have to suggest it might be because Mohamed Al Khalifa gets close, drops back a little bit. They're going to have to work the traffic, and the next bit of traffic is right in front of them now. It's the car that's the effective leader in the 570S class. It's car number uh, 15, Danny Henry. He's still within, he needs to be within 17 and a half seconds of the race leader in the 570S class, which is Danny Fo David Foster, and he is. He's 14.7 seconds behind them, so he is the effective leader. Keeps out of their way, though. But that was an advantage gained by Mark Hopton and Mohamed Al Khalifa. You know, sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. The traffic is going to be precisely where you don't want it to be. And that has happened to the driver sweeping through our view in number 13. He will still probably take second place overall, but his chance of deposing Mark Hopton, I think, has been taken away from him now. Three minutes remain. Yeah, real bad break there into turn eight um, for Khalifa. He was looking strong. The previous lap, he was actually uh, half a second faster than Hopton, uh, but obviously lost all of that advantage uh, through the back, back marker in the, uh, in the chicane. So, uh, but, you know, Khalifa has the pace. If he can just get close to, to Hopton again and unnerve him, well, you never know. He's got another lap to go, at least, a lap and a half. And all the drivers, of course, will be looking on up the track ahead of them to try and work out if anybody is likely to offer them a chance to slow the driver in front so they can catch. But right now, sweeping through turn 16 with probably two more laps. Yes, they're lapping in uh, two minutes 12. We've got two minutes 20 remaining on the clock. So through comes the race leader, Gonzalo de Andres, but he's not five seconds clear. He needs to be at least five seconds clear to become the winner with his penalty still to be added to his time. He's only one and a half seconds clear of 77. That is Mark Hopton. 
Hopton by name, Hopton by nature, going over the curbing there at turn one, but nothing untoward has the car back on terra firma at turn two. And Mohammed Al Khalifa, well, that was a costly lap for him. He went to, from half a second back off the tail of Mark Hopton to one and a half seconds back. So unfortunate for the driver of car number 13, but it's been a very good meeting for him. He took second place yesterday, and if he can add third place today on the track, that will become second place with a time penalty for Gonzalo de Andres. That will be a very good haul of points for Hamid Al Khalifa. Absolutely, but even better for the 77 car, which is looking very good for uh, uh, a second win. Two wins out of two races potentially for them. It's not over yet, but uh, it's very close. Now, is this the last lap or do they have? We think they had just had about 10 seconds in hand to start one further lap. So still number seven, Gonzalo Dandres leading this race. Mark Hopton still giving chase. There was that moment we have to consider at that point on the circuit at the chicane two laps ago when Gonzalo Dandres really ran off the circuit and sort of cut the end off the corner the middle part of the chicane but I, I think he's in such desperation to try anything he can to find a five second advantage and he's not going to do it surely well, here we have uh, just under a minute to go they'll have this lap and the next one they're just sweeping through scene now to double Dwight de Bose a corner that goes on and on and on and when your tires are starting to go off uh, you might be the driver who's going off and off and off but the drivers have done a great job in this McLaren Trophy. These are very, very wieldy looking Arturas, a fantastic racing machine. They look brilliant in GT4. They look even more impressive here. Plus, they've got a whole host more power. A one driver really enjoying them. He's racing solo. He loves it so much is uh, Danny Henry, car number 15 in the 570S class. He's an AM. He doesn't have a pro driver to support him. And he looks like he's going to take victory in class next time around because he needs to be within 17 and a half seconds of David Foster, who's up the track ahead of him, but only by 14 point wait for it, waiting for the latest, latest one. It'll be about 14.5, 15 seconds. So just enough of pace uh, for Danny Henry, surely to take class victory. Quick check for on the screens. Anyone else about to be pinged for any penalties late in the race? All that our race leader, Gonzalo de Andres, can do is stretch his advantage. It's 2.2 seconds. He's done well the last lap. He's gained half a second, but he needs to find another three seconds to be safe in victory. This surely isn't going to happen. Look up the track ahead of him. Is the traffic? The answer is not close enough to trouble him. He's about to get on the tail. No, no, that's all looking quite good. There is another car in front of him. Hopefully, he can depose of that before they get to the chicane halfway up the Mistral Strait. If not, if not, it could be another victory on the track for the number 77 of Mark Hopton. It certainly looks that way, doesn't it? Bar any sort of last minute uh, changes, but uh, it looks pretty settled there. You're talking about the cars as well, the trophy cars. They are the, the owners of these cars. They're able to actually take these cars and race in GT4 with very small modifications. So that's a, one of the nicest things. Now, things Tommy comes down to small margins uh, for Khalifa to take second place. He's third on the track. He had to be within five seconds. And at the moment, he's 5.1 seconds down. So these real push and charge by uh, De Andres could have just at least saved one position in the score because a, a lap ago he was going to be finishing third. First on the track, third on the road, but let's see, traffic can give, it can take. No problems at all for, for Mark Hopton. He gets... Uh, and it's seesawing back again. Look at the graphic on the left-hand side of the screen. <laughs> Khalifa's only 4.8 seconds down when he went through the last sector. If he can keep that margin, he will squeak in to take second place. And victory will go again to Mark Hopton and Ewan Hankey. Looking at the number 70, that is their car. Entered and run by Greystone GT. Hasn't got far to go to complete this race. And for Gonzalo D'Andres, well, it's been a great run. Frustration yesterday with failing to get off the line at the start. Frustration today. Just one run at least one run too many over the lines at the outside of the circuit and taking the track limits punishment but uh, through the corner for the final corner for the final time ignore the car just flashing across now the one crossing the line will take the checkered flag but it won't take victory the question is is he still going to be five seconds clear of Mohammed Al Khalifa just waiting for confirmation of that 5.193, so De Andres hangs on by the skin of his teeth, at least to second place. He was first to the finish, and that hasn't ended up producing the results. So a five-second penalty has hurt him. Thomas Surgent comes through in fourth place behind Hopton, De Andres, Khalifa, and then Jay Palmer should be next in line. He had a relatively quiet race after he took over. That slightly damaged number 12 entry from Optimum Motorsport. There was that first corner clash when uh, Thomas Pintos and the... the immediate race leader from fourth place on the grid, Joe Osborne, just had a little coming together. 
and that meant uh, that he was going to be hurt by the fact that his pro driver, Joe Osborne, had less time in the car than his rivals. Waiting to see the gap between uh, Danny Henry and David Foster. And at the end, it was swapped around. The penalty time has been added. So Danny Henry wins the 570 class in number 15 by 4.1 seconds. So that means he really hauled back a good 13 seconds. So that was very good indeed for him and very, very frustrating indeed for the driver of car number 11. That is David Foster. He'd been handed the lead by Brad Ellis, but here we have a driver coming home who knows he's just uh, enjoyed victory yesterday and he's going to enjoy it even more today because win, one win added to another doesn't take much of a champion brain to work out. He now is the, the championship leader along with you and Hanky after this first visit to Paul Ricard. Yes, a clean sweep for 77, two races. So, uh, uh, well, the job well done there for, for both. They both drove very well. Hopped and put a lot of pressure on the Andrews. I was surprised the Andrews didn't have an answer to it, you know, but, uh, you know, it's all good, uh, good learning. And uh, these guys have acquired now good knowledge, uh, which they will take obviously into the next round. Yeah, and looking at the 570S class, um, we had, uh, Rafa Martinez, American racer, f beating fellow American Ron Trenker, moved up in the latter stages of the race to take third in that class. He was driving car number 24 from another car from Greystone GT. But uh, the marshals waved their flags. That actually is the last race of what has been an incredibly packed three days of competition here at Circuit Paul Ricard, culminating with the uh, race between 6 o'clock and midnight last night. Dramatic, dramatic uh, GT World Challenge race, the six hours of Paul Ricard. But this is history that has now been made by the McLaren Trophy, launched here this weekend, new championship for 2023, and there was some really good racing, and the drivers are going to go away. Consider all they've done on this circuit that offers them so much space to go and play, and they'll focus on when's the next round, where is it, and how are they going to perform even better. But it was a good, tidy, very, very tidy first event. I think it was a fantastic uh, weekend for McLaren, for the Arturo Trophy. And uh, yes, I mean, look at all the cars finishing the race as well. A great reliability. Um, and uh, what a great way to start. I mean, it's, uh, we're on to Spa next, which is a fantastic uh, um, event. With, uh, obviously, back in the 24 hour of Spa. And uh, I mean, the, you know, this, this series visits all the iconic tracks in Europe, uh, Hockenheim, Nürburgring, and so on. So, uh, yeah, it's a, a, a bright future there for the series. It's so great to see uh, the bronze drivers battling really hard all the way to the end. Yeah, they will have all learnt an enormous amount. And some of them, it might have been how to handle the car on the track, how to handle their tyres, and others, it would be how not to get pinged for exceeding track limits. But it's all a learning curve. And I tell you what, at a circuit like spa Frankish on next time around, there's more encouragement not to uh, exceed the, dry, the track limits because uh, the walls are an awful lot closer. They're a little bit closer, that's for, that's for sure. So I'm really happy that they came here first. Exactly. You know, and they have the, lots of good learning. You mentioned the point about the, uh, them learning from their pro drivers. I mean, you know, and we're talking about the mats of the car number seven, Hopton and, sorry, uh, uh, DeAndres and uh, Pinto. Uh, it's, um, you know, these guys, the, 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 the other car, uh, the, other, the bronze drivers from the other cars, they'll be learning more and more from their pro drivers. So, you know, the num number seven car cannot rest on, the, on their laurels in terms of pace. They will be catching up them. Yeah, there'll be plenty of debrief time from uh, the, the pro drivers who started the race looking to see how their teammates handled the second half of the race. But uh, car 77 took victory today here. They were second on the track, but with five second penalty for number seven. It's a double win for Ewan Hankey, who started, and a very happy Mark Hopton. Congratulations, boys. That's a double win this weekend. You've got to be pleased with that. <laughs> yeah, while well, you get your breath. <laughs> yeah, amazing, really. Compared to where we qualified, um, we've really done well in the races, We've come forward. Mark just drove an unbelievable stint. Yeah. Uh, really, really, really drove well, kept his calm. He was under pressure from the front and behind. So really, really happy. Absolutely. Have you got your breath yet? Just, just, <laughs> just, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, over the moon, like couldn't, just the best possible start to the season. So yeah, it did everything this man told me to do and uh, trust the process and it worked so yeah just guy i mean this this guy fucking out he's well they're all quick they're quick drivers so a lot of pressure but yeah i loved it super happy this is going to be a great season isn't it uh, we're aiming for one yeah 100 percent a stressful one stressful one. well great memories from rickard well done congratulations to you both Thank you. Thank thanks you. so the sun's shining there on the winners you and hanky who kicked it off for Greystone GT, car number 77, second on the track, it's worth pointing out, but driver penalties of five second cost Gonzalo de Andres and Thomas Pintos. They did end up in second place, could very nearly, by dint of just a fifth of a second, have been third, but they just squeaked in ahead of the number 13 
car that was uh, started by Charlie Hollings and a uh, great run from Mohamed Al Khalifa. He's had a good weekend, second and third for that pairing. So they're learning as they go, but a very, very good start to this brand new racing series. Yes, but very encouraged by Khalifa's pace, really. It's great to see him. He was, he was there fighting for, for the top three, so uh, he'll be featuring in every race, and that's, that's great to see. But, you know, congratulations to the number 77 car. You know, the number seven car just didn't have the pace against him. So. Well, the 570S class, it was won today by Danny Henry. <laughs> Danny, that was a fantastic result for you, a class win. Hard work? Yeah, 50 minutes is uh, quite long when you're a lardy hog, but uh, <laughs> managed it, got there, I think. This is the end, isn't it? Yeah. This looks is definitely the end. Looks like it, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, that was fun. That was good. It's going to be a good season ahead. Thank you very much and well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's the first time I've heard a driver describe himself as a lardy hog. It did make me smile there. But here are the results overall. Mark Hopton and Ewan Hankey coming clear by 3.3 seconds ahead of the penalised Gonzalo D'Andres and Thomas Pintos. They lost five seconds by exceeding track limits. Mohamed Al Khalifa, Charlie Hollings in third overall. Then Thomas Surgent and Michael O'Brien in fourth. Jay Palmer and Joe Osborne with that lightly damaged car. Could have been a winner. Hasn't turned out that way. That was the car rebuilt overnight. Albert Jochums and Charles Waltzman complete the top six. And there was Danny Henry. We just heard from him. He was an am runner all on his own. No wonder he felt so hot and he's won the 570S class. But for David Foster and Bradley Ellis, that little time penalty just cost them big time. They could have taken victory in class. Rafael Martinez and Jem Hepworth third in the 570S class and completing the top 10, another American racer, Ron Trenker, sharing with John Lancaster, fourth in the 570S class. And for Sean Pendrich, good that he got a race today with Stuart White. They didn't get to start yesterday, so they get the experience. Uh, that comes from racing at this great circuit. It's been a brilliant start for the McLaren Trophy. This is the first ever race for the Arturas, the 570S as we've seen before, but it's fast, they're wieldy, and they provide great racing. So let's take a look back at the highlights, and it was a much better start for the number seven from pole from yesterday, and Thomas Pintos led on the way down to the first corner, but that was not counting the white and red car of Joe Osborne, starting fourth, went up, and a little touch between them just as they closed in into the first corner, and that was a chance for those behind to close up, and unfortunately for Pintos, that shuffled him down the order, and there was some really hard attacking drives there, and uh, Charlie Hollings getting very busy indeed, and car 77 was being driven very well indeed by Ewan Hanks. That was yesterday's winner. Could they do it again? The pit stops came. There was an offence uh, for one of the crews, and that really cost them big time, and uh, that uh, can hurt you. Go under your pit stop time, and it's really going to be a problem. Now, a driver who was leading the race was Ian Campbell, and he had three cars closing on him, and a little moment where it went wrong for him, possibly with a puncture, uh, cost him a chance of winning the race with Ollie Webb, and it got so tight in the second half of the race. This is Gonzalo D'Andres now having a fabulous battle with Mark Hopton and Mohamed Al Khalifa, very, very close in behind. They had a three-way battle covered by about two and a bit seconds. Now moving to the front, not on the track, but because a penalty was being applied to one of his rivals was uh, Danny Henry there, and he just moved ahead of Ron Trenker. Second in class would become victory in class in the 570 class but towards the end of the race it was all about Mark Hopton making sure he was keeping the number seven in sight as long as he's within five seconds all would be good and so it proves so two wins in two days for the 77 crew from Greystone GT Hopton and Hankey and now it is time for the podium and the drivers go racing for the pleasure but they don't mind a little bit but that is the end of the first ever round. And that's thank you very much uh, from me, Bruce Jones, and from Tommy Erdos. That was the first ever round of the McLaren Show for the Arturas. Absolutely shone here in the sunshine on the Riviera.